For today's demo, I'm going to be walking through separations. I'm going to be initiating a admins correction par as the member, um, requesting a separation. Uh, I'll then go through the approval process and create the separation assignment um, through the assignments module. Um, explain how the order is generated and then show the completion of the transaction, um, sending that information to job data and completing the separation of this member. Um, so first, I'm going to log in as the user, johnnyfbonilla.mil. And from the self-service window here um, on the initial login, I'm going to go to my personnel action requests um, or my PARs. Um, and I'm going to create a new PAR. I'm going to use the effective date of today um, and select the action of admin records correction. Uh, the reason of miscellaneous. So as we walk through the admin records correction par, uh, the effective data is defaulted in based on my criteria entered. Um, more information, I'm just going to be requesting a separation effective 11-24-2020. I'm going to save that information, move on to the next part of the activity guide. Um, I'm not going to add any attachments at this time. Uh, I could if I wanted or needed to. Um, it is optional, so I'm not going to add anything. Right now, we're going to move on to the next part, validating my request for termination. Um, effective date, admin records correction, uh, everything looks good. Going to validate. Um, it has passed validation. It's now ready for approval. So I'm going to click next. Um, this I can preview the approval chain here or display any errors or warnings. Um, I'm OK with everything that has been entered as the user. I'm going to go ahead and submit my admin records correction par. It has now gone through the workflow to the S1 pool of my department. And I'm now going to log out as the user. I'm going to exit from the PAR. Uh, just go to the home page here and log out as the user. Um, I'm now going to switch over. I'm going to log in as the HR professional um, that sits in the S1 pool for the PAR that I just submitted as the user. So when I log in, as you can see in the top right here, I have a flag for a notification, um, an admins correction PAR for Johnny Polia um, has been submitted by myself here and waiting my approval. This is going to take me to the PAR pending approvals page. Um, I have one admin records correction PAR. I'm going to click into the PAR. Review the information here. Um, I know that I need to add a final approver. So I'm going to click add. Select approver and I'm going to select my unit commander to be the final approver in the PAR request for separation. I'm going to insert a commander into the approval chain. Staff Sergeant John Smith has been added. It's not routed yet. I'm going to go ahead and approve on behalf of the HR professional here. You can enter comments if you would like. They're not required. I'm going to go ahead and submit that approval. So as the HR professional, I now approved intermediately the admin records correction par for separation that was submitted uh, i'm going to sign out 
as the HR professional and I'm going to log in now as the commander that I sent this to for final approval. So this will be a very similar process as to what was just shown. Um, so now I'm logged in again. I have a new notification that an admin corrections part is awaiting my approval. I have a few um, pending approvals sitting here in my commander queue. Um, this is the one that was just submitted to me routed on 1124. So I'm going to go back into this into the par now uh, submitted for approval. Um, effective date of today, 1124, requesting a separation effective today. Uh, everything seems good here from my end, so I'm going to go ahead and approve it as a commander. And just let them know to create separation. Um, going to submit for final approval. I've approved the request. It's no longer in my queue as the commander and my par is now approved. I am ready to view and go create my separation assignment. I'm just going to log back in as the member to go view that final approval. So I'm going to go back into my personnel action requests. Um, here's the par that I created. It says it's been processed. Transaction summary complete. And everything is good to go. I can view the approval chain here that you know, um, Sergeant Rick James said this was good to go on his intermediate approval. My commander, Staff Sergeant John Smith, has told the HR professional to create the separation um, and the admin records correction part has been approved. So that is creating a admin records correction par for a separation. I'm now going to log back in as the HR professional. And I am going to go create the separation assignment through the assignments module. So we're going to navigate through Navigator, Workforce Administration, Assignment Tracking, and R3 Assignments. going to use the EMPL ID of the member that requested the PAR. He's currently arrived on a reassignment um, at this UIC in this position. I'm going to create a permanent assignment from the create permanent assignment drop down. And I'm going to choose active to different service AC. Projected begin date. Uh, the PAR was approved for with an effective date of 1124 based on the soldier's request. So I'm going to use 1124 as my begin date. This is a assignment. The report date and the projected end date, they're all the same date based on the date inserted here in the projected begin date field. Number of days is one. For this assignment, uh, we carry forward the information on the member's current assignment. Um, there's no change that should be required. You can move the member into a template if you would like to. Um, it's not required. Um, everything defaults. You can leave it as is. Uh, two additional required fields, though. Movement ID. Uh, this is basically going to consist of your SPD code, your MPA reason, reenlistment eligibility, Loss reason if you're guard. I'm going to go ahead and select early release program voluntary as the movement ID and character of service because he is being discharged is required as well. I'm going to give him an honorable character of service for his time. That's all the data that is required to be input for this termination. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and submit. 
as you can see here, that the transaction was routed to a PSC pool um, rather than an S1 because the assignment type here in our assignments configuration was set to PSC pool because this is an active component assignment rather than the S1 pool, which you saw during the PAR. Um, this is now going to go to a different user list um, to do the approval of this assignment. So I'm now going to log in as a member in the S1 pool who, or I'm sorry, the PSC pool who sits most likely at the MPD for that UIC in the department hierarchy. The approval process is going to be very similar um, to what you saw for the PAR. Um, however, just different users because we are using uh, PSC versus S1. So here's the assignment. Uh, it's the latest one. So I'm going to view the assignment, make sure that everything is OK, good to go. It is required to view the assignment before you recommend approval or denial. Um, you know, the effective date seems good. Um, I'm OK with the movement ID, character of service um, based on you know, user input. I'm now going to go add the separations specialist at HRC who approves the terminations. Um, Alyssa Lego will be the user who's sitting at an HRC level as the final approver. I'm going to insert her into the workflow. Um, she's now the final approver. Um, multiple users in the PSC list. Alyssa is the final approver. So I click done. And I'm going to click recommend approval. And submit that to Alyssa for final approver. My job as the intermediate approver at the MPD is now done. I'm going to switch users one more time to Alyssa. And again, as you'll see, I have a no notification now. An assignment submitted, waiting for your approval. So I'm going to take my action against the notification. I can view the approval status here. I don't need to add anybody else. I can see the MPD uh, Staff Sergeant John Brown's comments here. Again, I have to view the assignment to make sure that everything's OK. I agree with you know, Staff Sergeant John Brown's comments are good to go. Looks good to me. Last step in this process will be to approve this assignment. Now this assignment will generate an order here based on this approval. So once this approval completes, I'm going to go back in as the HR professional that submitted this and the HR professional of this UIC. I'm going to go home um, to re refresh the page, refresh the assignments landing page for this member. I'm going to go back into our three assignments. Pull the member back up. And as you can see now, this termination discharge assignment has made its way from the pending tab, which it was currently at when we submitted it, to the current approved tab. We've gone through the approval process. It's been approved by the MPD. It's been approved by HRC. Um, here is the view order link. You can also view that by going into the details and going to the orders tab. This is just a little bit of a shortcut to view the order. So Department of Army, the member's current information for why he's being discharged. Approved. So I'm going to go back now. Now I'm going to complete the process of actually terminating this member. I'm going to depart the member from his current arrived assignment. There are no arrivals on termination. So once I submit this departure, everything defaults in here. Um, no 
data needs to be entered here by the HR professional. This departure, when I click submit departure, will complete the entire process of the termination. So we're going to go ahead and click submit departure. That's now been processed. Return to the landing page. As you can see, there are no assignments now on the current approved tab. There's no assignments on the pending working tab. We'll go to the completed tab. This first assignment was a historical assignment. This middle assignment completed the PCA reassignment that he was currently arrived on has been completed. And the member's termination discharge voluntary has also been completed. Duty status has been updated to discharge. This member is now officially discharged from IPSE. We're going to go to the member's job data and just validate that the termination is also on job. Termination discharge effective date of 11-24-2020. All the information that has come over from his current assignment. Um, the member with a duty status integration, a job data integration, an order, um, the completed assignment, the completed separation assignment, um, this member is now officially terminated um, and would have to be rehired um, in order to have an active record in IPSE. And that will do it for the separations demo using an admin's records correction part request.